Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I'm John and today we're going to talk about why you do not want to ship in the winter or at least why you can only do it when it's extremely safe to do so. I think most places, either Reptiles Express or Shipper Reptiles, say not to ship unless the daytime temperatures at any three of the locations of where you're shipping from, where you're shipping to, or the FedEx hub that the package is, is going through, uh, the temperature should be, I think, above 40 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for the daytime temperature. Now, you also have to consider uh, if the temperature is going to shift a lot the day before or the day after, or the day of or the day after. Um, this morning it was negative 8 degrees when I took my when I took Maddie to daycare, and now the temperature is going up to 30 today. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to do it on a day where there's a 30 or 40 degree shift in temperature in case the package gets stuck somewhere because it can get stuck uh, where you're shipping it from. It could get stuck at a hub. Memphis and Indy have seen a bunch of bad weather this year so far and packages have gotten stuck there in the middle of snowstorms. So um, we're going to do an experiment and that experiment is that we have a little uh, a wireless thermostat here that connects to this kind of base hub here. And we're gonna wrap up this package with the heat pack. We're gonna see how warm this box is. Um, we're gonna pretend like this is our little snake for the experiment. We're gonna see how warm this box gets inside of a temperature controlled area. Right now, this room is 75 degrees. It's a little on the cool side because my, my heater even has trouble warming this place when it's zero degrees out. So we're gonna slide this into the snake bag. We're gonna seal it up, and this is gonna be our, our snake for the experiment to kind of let you know what the snake is going through as it's going through the shipping process when it's cold outside. And I guess this kind of works for uh, the other extreme as well when it's really hot, because even Pittsburgh sees days in the summer where we're 90, 95 degrees, and I'm sure if I was shipping to Arizona or the desert or Florida, you're seeing days where they're 95, 100, which you shouldn't be shipping in either because you could fry the snake, especially if they're on a truck. So we're going to get the baseline temperature in here. We're probably going to let it sit in this room for two hours to let the heat pack warm up. And then I'm going to take it outside, and we're going to leave it outside for an hour or two to see how cold it gets inside, even with a new heat pack in there. So really, we're going to pack it just the same way I would normally pack a snake. So we have our uh, you know, shipping box with the styrofoam inside. I'll take a piece of this unprinted newspaper and I'll put it in the bottom to give a little cushioning for the snake. The snake in the snake bag. You will put that on top of that paper. Take another piece of the paper, put it on top of the snake to give it a little cushion. And then the next step would be to tape your heat pack to the top piece of styrofoam. And then what you do is you put the heat pack top down or face down inside the box. I just opened this heat pack, so I'm gonna let it breathe for a little bit just to make sure that it heats up. And I usually do that with all the heat packs because I have received heat packs, and I don't know if they opened the heat pack too early or if it was just kind of a dud, but I've received snakes in the winter or in the early spring where the heat pack was completely dead in less than 24 hours. And these are supposed to be 40 plus hour heat packs, assuming they use the right ones. Um, you're also not supposed to cover up this red line on the heat pack, so you kind of tape on the outsides of it. And I like to wrap the tape on the other side to make sure it uh, keeps hold. So I'm going to let this, I'm going to make sure this warms up before I seal it in there. And then I'm going to seal up this box like I normally would uh, any other snake that's getting ready to ship. And then we will get to figure out what temperature is inside compared to what it is in the room once this heat pack heats up. And at that point, we will cut back into the video. I'll show you what it's like uh, in here for the snake with the heat pack. And then we will take it outside, and I'll leave it outside for about two hours, and we'll see how cold it gets. Um, the part that I didn't cover was the air holes in the box. In the summer or in the warmer months, usually I usually put an air hole on each side of this box um, for the snake to be able to breathe. In the winter, I usually only do one or two. Um, do not do this with the snake in the box, but basically you, I usually just take a, a screwdriver and uh, poke a hole on the outside to make sure it goes through the styrofoam and then there's your air hole. So I have one on this side and one on this side to make sure that there's some air circulation in there. And that's it. Once this heats up, I'll seal this box up and then we'll cut back into the video after it's probably been sitting here for an hour or two to see how hot 
and actually gets inside of this box when you're indoors in a temperature control area. All right, so it's been about three hours since I sealed this box up with the heat pack inside and the uh, wireless thermostat. As you can see here, the room temperature, which is up top here, is about 77 and a half degrees. It's gotten a little bit warmer as the day warmed up. As I said earlier, it started off like negative eight this morning and it's climbing up to, I think 30 degrees right now. When I started the video earlier, it was 20 degrees. So it's quite a bit warmer, so the room is warming up. The inside of the box, so if you remember correctly, the thermostat's in the bottom of the box, kind of like it's where the snake would be, and the heat pack is taped to the styrofoam at the top, is actually all the way up to 87.8 degrees. And it's been slowly climbing for probably the last three hours, to be honest. Um, it even went up another two degrees in the last hour. I was trying to leave it in here as long as possible to get to see how hot it actually gets. Right now it's 10 degrees warmer than ambient air temperature in here. Uh, I'm expecting it to get a little bit warmer in there, but the test that I'm doing here isn't necessarily how much warmer it gets when it's in a controlled environment. It's how warm it stays while it's outside. So while this heat pack may still be heating up, I think they said it could take up to four hours for it to get to its maximum temperature which would be in another 45 minutes to an hour. I want to get this box outside now because the temperature is only going to drop from this point since the sun sets in about two hours. Um, so, and it's already behind the trees behind my house. So the temperature is going to stop dropping and I think it's going to get really cold again tonight. So I'm going to get this box outside. I'm actually going to put this thermostat outside too. So not only will we have the air temperature outside, but we'll have the actual temperature of the thermostat inside the box. I'm going to put it on an elevated surface. I think maybe on my patio table it's covered up so it's not directly on the ground. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see how low the temperature drops inside this box compared to what it is outdoors and see how warm it, it keeps this box and it keeps the snake inside when you're shipping it in cold weather. So I'm going to take this outside right now and we will see you in an hour or two to see what it looks like. All right, so this package has been outside here for about 30 minutes. As you can see, the outside temp is 36 degrees, and inside the box it is 70. Now, so this dropped from, I think, 87 or 88 degrees down to 70 in about a half hour. So we dropped 18, close, 18, almost 20 degrees in, in a half an hour of this box sitting outside with a fresh, brand new heat pack. Now, this snake is okay at 70 degrees, but we're gonna leave this out here a little longer as it starts getting colder outside. All right, so it is roughly five o'clock. So it's about an hour, 45 minutes, close to two hours that this has been sitting outside. Now, the outdoor temperature is shown at 31 and a half, which is probably accurate. And the inside temperature of this box is now 53 degrees. So the temperature inside of this box, even with an active heat pack, has dropped 35 degrees since I opened this box and since I put everything outside um, and that heat pack was activated. So this is a good example of why you do not ship snakes when it's cold, when there is a lot of uh, delays and bad weather and when it's below 40 degrees because if this package gets stuck somewhere and it's not indoors where it's at least you know 60 70 degrees this heat pack cannot do anything um, and which is also why you absolutely do not ship to home in the winter why you only ship uh, for pickup all right so it's been roughly another hour it's about six o'clock and i won't remember exactly what the last temperature was i think it was 53. the outside temperature seems to be about the same but it seems like maybe the the amount of heat that the heat pack produces kind of leveled off with what the outdoor temperature is and it looks like it maybe keeps it about 15 or 16 degrees above what the air temperature is because it seemed to kind of slow down i'm assuming if i left this out here all night it would probably get closer and closer to what the outdoor temperature is but maybe it gives you an extra 10 degrees of heat over top of what 
um, the out this the outside air temperature is now it took it uh, what two to three hours to get this cold so if your snake is left on a cold truck in the middle of winter um, for more than an hour or two they are going to start freezing pretty quickly all right now we're back inside and I'm gonna let this uh, start warming up again slowly and since I'm doing this test I'm actually gonna test how long this heat pack actually works for they're rated at 40 hours typically I'm curious to see if it actually re retains heat that long so I'm gonna leave it in here in the snake room overnight and I'm gonna actually want to see how hot it gets at the hottest and I want to see how long it keeps heat in there for so it gives you I've always kind of wondered and I've asked uh, clients as I've shipped them snakes you know was the heat pack still warm and a couple of people I spoke to said it was still warm in the morning, but I actually want to know how long it stays warm for. So I'm going to test that on the other end of this. But speaking about specifically shipping in winter, this is why it's it's very um, kind of scary to ship in the winter, and why unless we know there are no likely delays and the temperatures are above a certain threshold, we don't ship at all. And I will not ship to your home during the winter months because even if where you're living it's 80 degrees, it's 30 degrees here. And Memphis could be in the 30s or 40s or 50s or Indies, Indy either. Um, if it gets stuck in either one of those hubs and it's not inside of a facility, if it's stuck on a truck or stuck on a plane, that snake's probably not going to arrive to you alive if it's sitting in a box that is 45 degrees for 24 or 48 hours. So if you're shipping in the winter, make sure you're following the guidelines by Ship Your Reptiles or by Reptiles Express. Again, I think what their recommendation is, the daytime high at both locations, basically all three locations, where you're shipping from, where you're shipping to, and the FedEx hub, the daytime high needs to be above 40. And I would also take into consideration um, how cold the temperatures are gonna be as well, because sometimes there's gonna be a 40 degree shift in temperature like it was today. The days start off negative eight here and went up to 35. And I would not have shipped it if it was went from, you know, zero degrees to 40. That's just too much of a temperature change. So it'd be very safe because these guys, they're used to being in Africa. They're used to 70, 80, 90 degree heat. They're not going to survive if they're stuck in a box, if they get delayed somewhere, and they're stuck in 45 degree temperatures. Um, these are not the snakes to do that with. Um, specifically ball pythons, because that's why I mainly ship but any of your tropical snakes. And even some of the other snakes that are okay in the colder climates, it's still going to get cold. They're probably not going to survive if they're stuck, if they get delayed by a day and they're stuck for two days being shipped. So just a quick update. I brought these inside last night and it looks like the heat pack is still going strong. The temperature in this room obviously went down overnight. Um, so the inside temperature is 73. But that heat pack is still keeping that box 10 degrees warmer than the ambient air temperature in the room. So it is about, I would say, 12 hours since I brought them inside, and I probably around 18 hours or so since I actually started the heat pack. So this heat pack's at about 18 hours, and it's still working at its maximum capacity. So I'm going to leave it sit here, and I'm going to wait to see how long it takes for this heat pack to actually stop working. All right, so we are about uh, 27 hours into this project where I first um, unwrapped the heat pack and started letting it heat up and I think it's starting to kind of wear off a little bit the and it's like peak heat yesterday when I had it inside it was about 10 degrees warmer in here than it was in this room and as of right now it is almost 80 degrees right here where this thermostat is in the room, and we're still only hitting about 86 or so degrees uh, with the heat pack. So I think it may be close to kind of uh, where it's kind of peaked and now it's starting to kind of wane off a little bit in terms of what it's giving off in terms of heat. So I would say maybe you know, it says they're 40-hour 40, 40 heat packs, and I am going to leave this in here a little bit longer um, just to see how long it maintains it around 85, 86 degrees. 
in this room because I am curious to see how long the heat actually works for. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to stop it now and maybe write a little note at the bottom telling you how long it actually lasted so I can actually start editing the video and get it posted. But if you're shipping a snake, it's good to know that these packs last at least 24 hours. They do well when they're in climate controlled areas. They'll do well for you if they're on a truck and the truck is 50, 60 degrees, but they do not work if they're on a truck that's gonna be 20 degrees. The, the FedEx trucks are not temperature controlled. Uh, they're gonna be freezing cold. They are not guaranteeing delivery early in the morning. I think, if I remember correctly, I haven't had a snake delivered to my house in years. Um, I did it, the last time I did it was well before I moved into this house and I've been here for a year and a half because they were arriving so late. I wasn't receiving it. Overnight with these are supposed to be by 10.30, overnight deliveries. I had never had one arrive before 12 and they were coming as late as four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Now, those were in the summer, so it wasn't as big of a deal because Pittsburgh doesn't get super blazing hot and they didn't require heat packs. But it, FedEx is so unpredictable with when those packages are going to arrive. The safest thing for you to do is to get your snake shipped to the FedEx hub for pickup. In winter, really nobody should be delivering to homes because of exactly this. It's too cold in most places for this animal to get stuck somewhere. It, uh, it might be warm where you live or where you're shipping to, but it's not necessarily warm at the hubs. Then if it gets stuck in transit somewhere and it's not in a facility that has you know a thermostat and it's set to 65, 70 degrees, this snake is going to have it pretty rough or not even arrive alive uh, when it gets to you. So. Um, Make sure you're following the temperature guidelines given to you by Reptiles Express or Ship Your Reptiles. Make sure you're paying attention to the weather at the FedEx hubs uh, that these are going through, whether it's India or Memphis. Make sure you're paying attention to storms, um, inclement weather, staff shortages. Usually Reptiles Express and Ship Your Reptiles will post that on their homepage at the very top in a banner, usually in red, that says, warning, do not ship this week. Uh, Pack, uh, staff shortages, package backups, bad weather, all that stuff. So just follow that, be cautious. These heat packs do work as long as uh, there aren't any major delays or you're not shipping to home. Do not ship to homes in the winter. It's safe to do in the summer. I usually don't even like to ship to home in the summer sometimes because they still get stuck and they can still sit on a truck that's 95 degrees for, for 12 hours. So be safe. Keep the animal safe. The heat packs work well. Let me actually get one for you to show you what it looks like, the heat packs that I use. And these are readily available pretty much through every major shipping supply company for reptiles. They're called they're made by UniHeat, and these are the 40-hour ones. They also come in 20, 30, 60, and 72 hours. Uh, they recommend not to use anything less than 40 hours. You can buy them, I guess, in 60 or 72 as well, if you need to. But for everything, I'm using them for 40 hours is okay. And they're not expensive, and you can buy them in larger packs, uh, more than just one at a time. It's usually a little cheaper that way. So be safe shipping your snakes. The heat packs really do absolutely nothing if this snake is stuck outside in freezing cold weather for an extended period of time. So. Do not ship your snakes to homes in the winter, and make sure that it's safe to ship when you do ship them in the winter. Only do FedEx hub pickups uh, so that you are not, you know, potentially losing a snake. So that's it for today's video. I think it actually ran maybe a little longer than I wanted to, but uh, this was a good science experiment. This is something I wanted to do for myself for a while to kind of figure out what kind of results these heat packs actually give us. And, you know, like I said, 27 hours into it, it's still keeping it, you know, it's still giving off some heat. It's keeping it six degrees warmer than this room. Um, and at this point, I think 24 hours is kind of the, the point in time where I would start feeling, uh, start fearing that it's not really going to be working anymore. Typically, the way I do it is my FedEx hub 
for me to drop them off. I think they close. I think I need to have them dropped off by 8 o'clock to get the overnight delivery. So I usually start packing up the snakes around 6 p.m. to get them there around 7. I, or at the earliest I get them there at 6. So I'll crack open a heat pack if I need to use one. Probably about 5. I'll, I'll crack them all open at the same time. And I'll start wrapping up all the snakes and putting them in all the boxes and getting them all together. So usually the, the heat packs have about a half hour to start working before I seal it up so I can make sure they're giving up heat. And that way the heat packs aren't kind of losing some of their shelf life before they need to. If I crack this open at 5 p.m. and the snake is delivered hopefully at the very latest or picked up at the very latest by 5 p.m. the next day, that keeps me in that 24 hour window that is safe for that snake and still keeps the snake warm whether it's sitting in the FedEx hub or on the back of a truck. So try to drop off your snakes as late as possible in the day to your FedEx hubs for to drop them off for delivery and try to crack these heat packs open as late as possible too. So hopefully that was good info. Hopefully I did a good uh, science experiment that will help you guys out. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.